How you doing everybody? Coach PJ Street here with Revive Fitness Systems. Uh, welcome to the first installment of How to Track Calories for Weight Loss. I have been wanting to do this uh, video series for quite some time, but I've, I've hesitated because I was struggling with whether or not this was necessary because the, the concept of counting calories and counting macros uh, to lose fat and to lose weight seems pretty self-explanatory. I wasn't sure that it was necessary because it's pretty straightforward, right? If you want to lose weight, you know that you have to expend more calories than you, can, than you consume. Uh, you also know that you need to set, at least hopefully you know this, you need to set a certain calorie limit. And once you have that established, you simply weigh and measure your food, read food labels, etc. cetera. Uh, and it's that simple. However, it's become painfully obvious to me that it isn't that simple for most people. And a lot of people are fouling up their nutrition tracking. Okay. It seems straightforward. Uh, and conceptually it is, but uh, a lot of people fall in uh, to uh, pitfalls with this stuff and make a lot of mistakes. So I want to take you through uh, three or four days of how I track my nutrition. Um, in this first installment, I'm just going to go over the basics and an overview using myself as a case study and an example. And then you can apply this information to yourself. Uh, I'm currently uh, in an active fat loss phase. Uh, I'm four weeks into it. I'll probably be in this fat loss phase for 12 to 13 weeks. The goal is to be in the best shape of my life for my 43rd birthday in October. And I'm four weeks in. I'm already down about 13 pounds. Um, so I'm going to use myself as a frame of reference throughout this series. Um, so to give you an overview of, of, of where I am and what what my parameters are, okay, I have a coach, even though I'm a coach, I've hired a coach myself, Paul Carter, uh, you can find him at Lift Run Bang, he's all over the internet, uh, brilliant guy with training and nutrition, um, I wanted that accountability and I wanted somebody, even though I know how to do this stuff, I wanted somebody to guide me um, and have that accountability. So, Paul has started me out on a very aggressive calorie deficit um, I started this process out at 228 pounds. Uh, I'm now down to about 215-ish. Um, so, you know, I've dropped about 13 pounds in the last four weeks. Actually, it's four weeks today. Um, so, he has me on about 18 to 1900 calories per day, which for a guy my size um, is a very aggressive calorie deficit. Okay, it's about nine calories roughly uh, a little bit lower than that, um, per pound of my body weight, all right, my current body weight. Um, if you're trying to figure out your fat loss calories, okay, my typical recommendation with my clients, and this is how I go about it with my clients, I'll start them out at about somewhere between 10 to 12 calories per pound of their current body weight, and we'll see how they respond. Uh, every two weeks, we look at that, okay? Um, so I would suggest starting, uh, if you're interested in losing fat and you're going to do this yourself, I would suggest starting out at the high end, about 12 calories per pound of body weight. Um, so for instance, if you're a 150 pound female, for, for instance, and you want to lose body fat, you should probably start out around 1,750 calories per day. That puts you at about um, 12 calories per pound, if my math's correct. Uh, I think that's about right. Um, so... Start on the high end, see how you respond. Um, if you're dropping anywhere from about a half a percent to 1% of your body weight on average, if you're heavier, if you're above 200 pounds, carrying a lot of body fat, 1% per week is a good guideline. Uh, that's good responsiveness. If you're starting out lighter, under 200 pounds, and or you're a little bit leaner, uh, a half a percent per week is a very good rate of responsiveness. So. 150 pound female, again, using that example, if she is dropping three quarters of a pound um, to a pound and a half per week, that's good responsiveness. And if that reference female can get away with eating, again, around 1,500 to 1,750 calories per day, um, that's terrific. Now, 
as you lose weight, as one loses weight, there becomes less of you and your calories will need to be adjusted. For instance, if you go from 150 pounds to 140 pounds at a certain amount of calories, well, where you started that amount of calories is not going to work as well when you're 10 pounds lighter and you're gonna start outgrowing that calorie deficit. And that's a mistake people make is that they don't adjust their calories as they move along. So if you start to fall out of that rate of responsiveness, about that half a percent per week, and your compliance is on point, that's key. If your compliance is not on point, you have your answer as to why your, your progress is slowing down or is, not, or is not existent. If you are 80 to 90 percent compliant, and you know you are, and you're tracking, weighing, measuring your food intake honestly, accurately, and precisely, okay, if you stall out for about three or four weeks and nothing is moving, your weight isn't moving, your measurements aren't moving, you, it's probably a good indication that you need to make an adjustment in terms of the number of calories that you are eating downward slightly. Okay, or you can add in more activity. I would, it's much more efficient just to drop your calories a little bit more and that should kickstart more progress. Okay, but so again, 10 to 12 calories per pound of body weight to start. See how you respond. If you're not responding with really high compliance, go down a little further. Go to, if you started at 12, go to 11 calories per pound. If you're at 11 and not responding, go to 10. At 10 calories per pound, if you're moderately active and you're being honest about how you're tracking your food, you should be responding in that rate of a half a percent to 1% per week. Okay, so again, I'm on a very aggressive deficit because that's the way my coach wanted to do it, which I'm fine with. I'm all for rapid fat loss in certain situations. Um, it suits me for, for the timeline and the, and, the, and the time frame and the deadline that I have for my goal. So I'm in this really aggressive deficit. Um, 18 to 1900 calories per day. And um, we're keeping protein very, very high in the 240 to 250 gram range for me at now 215 pounds. So um, most people, I talked about calories. The other thing that you want to emphasize is protein intake. All right, ideally you wanna keep your protein intake at about one gram per pound of your current body weight. Uh, and as you drop weight, that, that percentage, um, relatively speaking, should get higher. So as you get leaner and lighter and drop weight, your protein intake in terms of the grams per pound should start to increase. Um, protein during a fat loss phase, during a dieting phase is crucial for satiety. It has an anti-hunger effect. It helps to spare loss of lean body mass and it has a higher thermogenic effect meaning your body uses a lot more energy digesting and absorbing protein than it does carbohydrate or fat. For, so for those reasons, protein intake during a fat loss phase is crucial. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of what I'm doing. I gave you some recommendations about how you, you should start to set up your fat loss nutrition in terms of calories, in terms of protein. I want to say I am not on a set meal plan. I have macronutrient targets. Okay, but I'm not on some regimented eat the same thing every day. Um, I don't like that. I don't do it for, for my clients. Um, strict meal plans in certain situations make sense. Um, a, for instance, a physique competitor. Everything has to be dialed in and everything has to be extremely predictable and you have to control all the variables to get somebody in stage shape over a certain period of time. Someone who has a very big deadline, like I do, um, I'm not using a meal plan though, but somebody that has a very big deadline uh, in terms of a beach vacation or a photo shoot and has a finite amount of time to do it, a very, very structured meal plan, uh, a very regimented, mundane, repeatable meal plan, a situation like that can be very beneficial. But for 95% of people, you don't need to be on some strict meal plan to where you're eating the same thing every day. All right. The only two things most people need to concern themselves with are calories, number one, 
and then protein intake. If you hit those two on the nose, you're going to blow yourself away with what you can do. So as long as you're not going over your established calories that you set for yourself for fat loss, any more than about 10 or 20% of the time. So in a 30 or 31 day month, we're talking about three or four times a month, you could be mindfully over those calories. As long as you are, you are within those parameters and you're tracking, which we're going to go over at length, is honest, accurate, and precise, you're going to be in good shape. So calories are king, that's first, and then you want to make sure that your protein is addressed and you're hitting that within a range. Again, around one gram per pound. Um, so those are the two biggies. In terms of carbohydrate and fat, if you're addressing your calories and you're not going over and you're getting sufficient protein, it's personal preference as to whether you want to eat more carbohydrate or more fat to make up the remaining calories. It really doesn't matter. It's personal preference. Um, I could make the argument that more carbs are going to be better um, in terms of fueling your training, but ultimately research has shown that when you equate for calories and protein, the percentage of carb versus fat really doesn't make a difference. Okay, so again, strict meal plans are not necessary. And you know, to me, if, if I give a client a hand them a meal plan, and I, I actually do do that just as a loose frame of reference, if I hand them a meal plan, it's like catching them a fish. I really want my clients and you to learn how to fish. And that's where tracking your intake and having, you know, a wider variety of foods, you really learn how to fish and you can make this way of eating a lifestyle permanently. And that's really the goal is to get you to get the results initially, go through the goal acquisition phase, and then be able to have a lifestyle system uh, that you can tweak for the rest of your life, depending upon your goal, maintenance or muscle gain or whatever. And you'll learn, you'll, you'll learn more tracking your food intake than going through a, a four year, you know, master's or PhD program in nutrition, just tracking your own food intake. Okay. So no meal plan for me, just, you know, calorie targets, protein targets, but even though I'm not a big fan of strict meal plans, I do think keeping things simple and having some level of uniformity in your daily eating goes a long way because you can go too far the other direction and take flexible dieting, which I would consider myself a flexible dieter, but you can take that to an extreme with the if it fits your macros and you're trying to incorporate 80 different foods that can become chaos as well. So on one end, you have the meal plan people. On the other hand, you have the if it, fit, if it fits your macros people. I think there's a sweet spot in between those. Okay. So when I talk about having some predictability and some uniformity, I like to take about three to five sources of protein, carb, and fat. Um, and basically, that's going to make up 90% of my diet. And then the other 10% or so... I'll fit some miscellaneous stuff in, some treats or whatever else that I want. Um, but what you're looking at here is, in fact, 90% of my nutrition intake on a given day. So for protein, uh, protein powder, uh, liquid egg whites I love. I use a lot of pre-cooked chicken strips. You can also use you know, raw chicken breast. Uh, Greek yogurt is a go-to. Uh, I like this Faye uh, True Blend, but any Greek yogurt will do. Um, deli turkey breast, easy and convenient. Um, big fan of ground chicken. This stuff's great. If you get sick of eating chicken breast, this, is, this stuff's awesome. It cooks really fast. Um, it, it's fantastic. And then um, lean ground beef, 90% lean. Uh, th those are my protein sources. Okay, that's basically it. Uh, and I'll, I'll rotate, rotate these in different combinations. Oh, I should also note, I do, I, I'm a fan of white fish. Um, you get a lot of volume for the calories, very low fat, no carb, and a lot of protein in white fish. I don't have my cod out here, but I also eat a lot of cod or mahi mahi. All right. That's my protein. Um, carbs, 
fresh and frozen fruit. Uh, I like Ezekiel bread. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, white potato, easily digestible. All right, I like the Simply Potatoes. They're, they're quick and easy. You can throw them in a toaster oven or an oven or an air fryer. They'll cook in 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Um, jasmine rice, again, a, a, a really easily digested carb. I love this stuff. I get these pre-packaged uh, microwavable packs. You can also just buy normal jasmine rice uh, and measure it out, read the label, same thing. A couple little uh, bonuses here for volume without calories. These shirataki uh, noodles, spaghetti and fettuccine from a company called Liveva. Th this stuff has been a game changer for me. Um, there's basically 60 calories in this entire package. All right, I usually use half a package. It adds bulk um, to my meals with no calories, very few calories. I'll toss these noodles in to a protein source in the skillet. Um, at the end for a couple minutes, it fills you up with no calories. It's been a game changer. Cauliflower rice, again, game changer in terms of adding bulk. Uh, this entire packet is 35 calories, uh, 5 grams of fiber, again, adds bulk and volume to your meals. It helps keep you full with very, very few calories. Um, in terms of making things a little bit more pleasurable and tasty, I get real creative with my seasonings and rubs and condiments. All right, I use a variety of rubs. Uh, I love this Bosari Citrus. Uh, I have a steakhouse seasoning here from a local steakhouse, which is incredible. I put this on everything, beef, chicken, eggs. Uh, I got a fish seasoning. Uh, this Kingsford Cajun seasoning is awesome. You can, I mean, you can use any Cajun seasoning. I love Cajun food. Uh, I put this on, uh, on all my protein. Um, Mrs. Dash Lemon for fish is great. And then all these sauces, Frank's Wing Sauce. Frank's Red Hot, uh, no calories, Tabasco, uh, low-cal, low-sugar ketchup, and barbecue sauce. I don't have the barbecue sauce out. And then, like, uh, these low-calorie marinades and sauces. This is a carne asada. I literally just, I mean, there's a lot of variety here between the different protein sources in terms of the meat, fish, and poultry, um, and all the different ways that you can season it and marinate it. Plenty of variety, but it's also very simple, you know, three to five sources for each macronutrient. That's 90% of my diet. 10% is for some treats. Uh, I'm a fan of like frosted mini wheats. At night sometime, I'll, I'll do a, a serving of mini wheats, very low fat, um, a nice bump in carb, um, and I'll, I'll mix that with cashew milk. Um with some protein powder, you know, shaken up in the cashew milk. And I use that as my milk over um, my mini wheats as like a treat. So that's kind of an overview. Now, what I like about all this, all this stuff is pre-packaged and pre-labeled. And this is where you're going to make your money, so to speak, in terms of results. What's, what gets measured gets managed. Okay. I track everything. All right. It takes me probably a grand total of five minutes a day to do this. Everything has a nutrition label on it, okay? I look at the label. I know what my serving sizes are. I use, and this is gonna be your best friend, I use the, and I'll put a little icon up, I use the Nutrition IX track app. Um, in my opinion, it's better than my fitness pal. I have all my clients use this app. It is incredible. You can put in all your foods as custom foods if they're not already in there. You can add all this stuff as a custom food in this app. You can scan a barcode and it usually brings it up perfectly accurately. You can save meals, you can save your custom foods, you can copy and paste foods and meals. It makes things super, super simple. When I say I literally have five minutes a day wrapped up in tracking all this, I really do. It's that easy with this app. 
If you want to use MyFitnessPal or Fat Secret, there's a bunch of the tracking apps out there. Great. I personally like this one. You don't obviously don't have to use it. But everything is quantified. So if I'm going to have ground chicken, um, I'm going to look at the label. It's already in my app. Um, if, if I want a serving of this, for instance, is 112 grams. If I want two servings of that, I will literally pull out 124 grams raw. And keep in mind, nutrition labels, it's always a raw, it's always measured in a raw serving. Okay, this is a mistake people make. So if I'm going to have 124 grams of this ground chicken, do not put it in a skillet, you know, the entire packet in a skillet. Don't throw it all in there cook it and then measure out 124 grams because as it cooks, the food volume will go down and lessen. So if you measure out 124 grams um, of cooked ground chicken, you're actually taking in more calories than you think you are. So it's a mistake people make. They will track their food raw, but measure it out cooked and they end up taking in more calories because there's a loss of volume as it cooks, but then you make up for it when you serve it out. Okay. That's a big mistake people make with tracking is that they're, they're, they're tracking their food raw, but they're measuring it out cooked. So don't do that. Same thing with like rice. If you cook, um, if you measure out a serving of rice in grams dry, and then you cook it. All right. This is something that the rice will actually, the volume will be bigger. So in that case, um, if you measure out um, 56 grams of rice, you're going to be shortchanging yourself. It works in reverse as well. Um, so I, I typically measure everything raw, okay, um, and then just just do the calculations if I need to. If if, if I if I measure it out raw um, and then I cook it, I know that it's going to be about 20% less. Or in the case of rice, it's going to be a lot more. White potatoes, the same way I measure that raw. Um, when, you, when you cook, you know, stuff like that, that's going to shrink up too. Uh, same thing with like fruit, like frozen fruit. I'll let it thaw so I can get the calories out of it because if I measure it frozen, it's going to weigh a little bit more frozen. Um, if I let it thaw out, it's going to be true to the measure and I'm not going to shortchange myself on calories. And when you're in a calorie deficit, you want every calorie you can get your hands on. So it's all that type of little stuff that um, a lot of people foul up. Okay, so read your labels. Um, and then as you eat throughout the day, you plug it in whatever app you're using. Again, I like Nutrition IX Track. All right. And as we go through the next three or four days here in this series, I'm going to prepare every meal and show you how I log all this stuff. And I'll take you through, okay, I'm starting it. My limit is 1900 for the day. As I go through this, I'll show you how I weigh it, how I calculate it. I'll show you how the calories are coming off and when I stop, and then I'll show you the macro breakdown. I typically, going off on a tangent here, but if I have 1900 calories per day, I strategically divide those up. Um, this might not be to your preference or might not work for you, but I know that I want to backload a percentage of my calories to the, the evening. Okay, so of my 1900, I might do 450 calories in, in like a, a late morning meal, um, another 450 like mid afternoon, and then I got about 900 or 1000 left. I'll have a big dinner. And I'm also backloading most of my carbohydrates um, to dinner as well. Because for me, carbs at night, it helps me sleep better because it raises my serotonin levels. That just works for me. It doesn't matter if you want to eat six smaller meals per day, two huge meals, if you want to intermittent fast. It doesn't matter how you do it. It just has to be sustainable uh, for you and be to your like, you know, to your likes and to your preferences. There's no, there's no correct meal frequency per se. It's what works for you. For me, I like bigger meals, fewer, bigger meals. If I do six small meals a day, I never feel satisfied. I just feel like I'm having a bunch of snacks. So 
that's what works for me. And I think that about wraps up the introduction. So again, uh, to my screen's blacking out, sorry. As a summary, if you're looking to lose weight and lose fat and you're going to do it on your own, set your calories between 10 and 12 per pound. I'd probably start on the higher end, see how you respond, make sure that your tracking is on point, you're reading labels, you're using food scale. If you don't have one of these, you're going to have a rough time. All right, get yourself a digital food scale. They're like, this. I think this was nine bucks. All right, you're weighing, you're measuring, you're tracking accurately. Calories first, and then you're going to emphasize protein. As you eat throughout the day, you're going to log it in your phone app, whatever whatever tracking app you're using. Okay, um, so that's that's kind of a broad overview. You know where I am um, going forward. I'll always be referring to my situation, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to extrapolate that out to you know potential situations on your side, and give you some examples there. Um, so I think that about wraps it up. Um, I'll be back uh, here in a couple days with uh, day one of my.